So guess what? We're going to talk about that really quick. So, because I think it's important on how to find deals. Mm -hmm. So number one, the best, number one, have a good realtor, right? I know everyone says that the real estate agents have deals that are overpriced or sometimes market deals are overpriced. But it's not necessarily about the deals that they have at that time. It's about building a relationship with an agent that has deals that might be able to offer it to you before they put it on the market or to make it less competitive. So real estate agents is a good way, number one. Number two, distressed properties. Now, distressed properties are abandoned properties. I'm sure we've all seen them, abandoned properties. To easily find out who owns an abandoned property, that is simple tax record search. No matter what city, you can go to the tax office of that city with the address and just try to get some information with who actually owns the property. Side note, I suggest doing that when you rent property too. When you're renting property, I suggest check the tax records to avoid scams, right? Okay, so that's a side note. And this is all free, by the way. Like, when you go and just double check a tax record, you can go in there and say, hey, look, I'm looking to buy this house. I just want to make sure this is the owner. Or you can say, hey, I'm looking to rent this apartment. I want to make sure that the person that I met with is the owner of the property. Okay, so let's, that's a free thing. Um, so that's one distress with abandoned properties. Number two, uh, there's the Essex County um, Court Office. They actually have... On record, when someone is about to go into a foreclosure or has been legally filed upon with foreclosure, let me just explain one thing for you. When someone is behind on their mortgage payment 90 days, that is considered they're going into foreclosure. The bank will send them a legal notice and they're going into a foreclosure. That's just a legal process. It's like eviction for a house, eviction for an apartment, but a foreclosure is just like a, a take back for someone who owns a property, okay? So the Essex County um, Sheriff's, uh, Sheriff's Office and any county's Sheriff's Office will have public information of persons that are in a distressed situation and or losing their property, right? And this is public information. <coughs> it's public information and it's free. However, you still gotta be tech, tactful. You can't just go to someone's house like, oh, your house is going up for a foreclosure. I wanna buy it. it there's a, you have to still be respectful, right? Because this is their house. But if it's a house that's abandoned and they, no one lives there and you got access to the owner for some reason, you have their information, you checked it on the tax records, you might be able to better contact them right away because they might just be looking to get rid of that property, right? So you got to be, you know, it's the, there's a level of aggression, but you still have to be tactful about this business because, you know, um, it's, a, it's aggressive. I know uh, certain people post uh, stories sometimes on Facebook about how people walking around in the neighborhood or random people just calling you, you you don't want to sell your house. They're just cold calling you like, hey, I got your number. I want to buy your house. First of all, the house is well maintained. You know, if, if you knew anything about them, they have a nice family growing there. You know, so, you know, be respectful of what I'm saying. So the Essex County Sheriff list, that is a free list. Like I mentioned, you can usually get that. They publish it in the newspapers. I don't quite recall the frequency, but... They, public, they uh, 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 disclose it in the local newspaper, so you can always count whatever county you're interested in. You can just contact them and ask them how do they release the list of distressed homes, okay? So, another good way, so distress with pre-foreclosure. I'm known number three, right? Anybody count it? Okay, number three. So, and then this is going to sound crazy, but obituaries. Nana got a house, guys, believe me, okay? And there's going to be like four or five people fighting over it. And uh, they don't want the house anyway. They just want the money that comes with the house, okay? So you could probably work a better deal with somebody like that. You might run into some of the probate and title issues that we were that we're going to get back to a little bit later on with that. Um, but that could be another way to find a good deal as well, right? Uh, divorce attorneys. Divorce attorneys. You know, people go through nasty divorces all the time. What is it, 50% of people get, go through a divorce now? I mean, that's crazy. 75. Is it 75? My goodness. <laughs> that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother meetup, guys, okay, about that one. <laughs> but um, no, so divorce attorneys, they have to, sometimes they have multiple assets, they have to liquidate them, you know, they have deadlines, so sometimes you can get really, really good deals. Um, I had a class earlier, what was it, yesterday? Yeah, yesterday I had a class at my office and we talked about this other one, and I tell people, it sounds funny, but eviction court. 
you see a landlord just got his, uh, you know, just got the hammer down on him. The tenant is cheering and got another three thirty days in the apartment, and he walks out with his head down. Go meet him in the hallway. He's probably tired of his problem. <laughs> He's probably over everything. You know what I mean? So you might build a relationship with him, and that that, that might not be a property that he might want to sell, but he might know people. He might have other properties. You see where it's going? This is no one knows you're in business to look for a deal unless you tell them. So you got to talk to try to target yourself to the right people. So a, a fed up. Um, like I said, a fed up uh, landlord is a great one. Another person, a CPA, right? A, an accountant, because they're doing bookkeeping for certain property owners. And someone could own a house for five years and never make a profit. You know, every year they're taking losses and they're like, this is not even, this is not what I thought it was going to be. And guess what? Their mismanagement could be your fortune. Right? The, there's, a, there's a topic, there's a word that we say the problem is uh, the profits are in a problem. You learn how to solve someone's problem, you can get a great reward for it. You know, so that's what one of the tips that I like to give out. Uh, what number am I on right now? Five. Five. I gave five, and I'm going into six, so I owe six. I owe five. I owe six. CPA. Um, okay. Uh, hold on, because it's about ten of them, and we went over them last night, and I'm really usually good. So okay, so we talked about obituary. Uh, distress properties. Oh, tax liens. Tax liens. That they are magnificent um, because certain cities you can just go online. You put it, upload a deposit online, and then you can bid on properties and really have access to uh, a tax lien. Anybody know how tax liens work? Okay, so we'll talk. Yeah, we'll talk about that for like a two, few seconds. So, tax lien is simple. Someone gets behind on their taxes for quarters. Usually, taxes are due every quarter. First, second, third, fourth quarter. Someone can get delinquent on their taxes, and it comes up for a tax lien, what, is, what they call is an auction. Public people can purchase someone's tax lien, and the incentive is that if they decide to redeem their taxes and pay it for themselves, you can get up to 18% of what you paid for their taxes. So it's a way to make money, right? Mm -hmm. But if they don't and you wind up foreclosing, now here's the, t here's the deal though. If you buy their first quarter taxes, be in position to buy the second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, because other people can buy the taxes too, right? And what you put yourself in a position is to be able to foreclose, have a tax foreclosure on that property, and own the property. Your tax foreclosure will trump their mortgage. Now what's the redemption? Redemption. So redemption is usually, I think, two years, if I'm not mistaken, yes. two years. So, so, so that's a great question because what is redemption? Redemption is I bought your tax lien, I put my 18% on top of it. You have two years to pay me back, or I, after that two year, I can foreclose on you. So that's a that's a nice way. You got an extra 1,100. You know, you're not ready to buy a whole property. You can put that in. You're definitely going to win something out of it. Right? It's just a two-year waiting game on that. But that's another way that you can uh, obtain properties. Um, another way is through city auctions, uh, city private special tax lien auctions. And then cities also have inventory auctions of properties that they have acquired and now they want to release. So they all have different schedules and times depending on cities of what you're interested in. So just staying in touch and going after that information through the local um local city that you may be interested in to find out those dates and times. Do you have a question? Yes, I want to just go back to the tax lien. Yes, ma'am. Like I know you, once you pay one quarter, you have to position yourself to continue to pay. The thing is, how do you get the notice of the next amount that needs to be paid? Well, say, okay, I know this year, this quarter is, say, $3,000, just for example. So how do I know next quarter? Usually the quarters are the same. No, I mean, to they take the same property. Well, you just keep an eye on it because you're registered on that tax lien site and you just keep an eye on those addresses. Um, I could say you could build relationships and find out on the, on the back end, but that probably won't be true. So you would have to just constantly wait and watch. It's a, it's a business of being in business, so you have to wait and monitor and, and stay on top of it. I had a question about how you said this. It trumps the mortgage. So if a person owns a mortgage, and, they, and you buy the tax lien? Yeah, tax. So what would happen if you redeemed it? The mortgage won't be paid, or you, would you have to pay that mortgage? So a redemption only happens if you already own the house and own the mortgage. You already own it. You're, you're the one that defaulted on your taxes. No, I'm saying for the tax lien, you said it would trump the 
mortgage. Yes, mortgage that is correct. Because any tax foreclosure will will supersede, supersede any mortgage really? taxes that then mortgage. Yes. I believe is it taxes then water amount. Yeah. Taxes then water lead the then the mortgage. The local municipality has more power of, of debt power debt position than a mortgage. Yes, that's a great question. Yes, ma'am. Right, so that's why I just leave it blanket where whatever city you're interested in, find out their process and procedure, okay? Because then each city, each state, you know, these are things you can take to other states. So just knowing and having a conversation with the people that are in charge of all of that is the best source of knowledge when you're dealing with those type of things. East Orange is one of the cities that actually foreclose on their own tax lien, so they do not do the tax lien sales, versus Newark actually sells the tax lien certificate, that's why. What did she say? East Orange will inform you because they have their attorney internally that will foreclose on the property and set that an auction on the Tuesday. Versus North, they have a public auction and they sell the tax and the, the owner have to um, do the foreclosure. Okay. Uh, let me get this woman right here. Yes, ma'am. What is the um, um, water lane? Okay, so same thing. So that's another way you can get a property as well, a water lead. So that means that somebody didn't pay their water and sewer bill. And then you can purchase that. You can bid on that as well. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Sewer too. Yeah, water and sewer, correct. Just to your point, Rose, I have to cut you Go off. Go ahead, yeah. The mortgage company, if, you can, if you're buying a house, there's a mortgage on there, the mortgage company was going to pay the taxes. Because they understand that the taxes come before them. Mm -hmm. So when you buy a house, it's normally in your escrow. Right. Then make sure that those taxes get paid. Because right. they're not going to lose that house over you not paying those taxes. Right. Yeah. But there is a slippery slope, yeah. you know, as you guys know, with the whole mortgage crises and cycles that have been, uh, that will al always happen in the real estate industry, you know, programs and finance programs change. Sometimes there wasn't, it wasn't mandatory to have your taxes and insurance and your mortgage payment. Some programs it's mandatory, so, you know, so just keep in mind with all of that. And that's how some other people get slide behind because they didn't have a mortgage <coughs> where their uh, taxes and their insurance were included into their mortgage payment. They were just paying the mortgage payment, then they go pay their taxes, then they go pay the insurance separate. I mean, those were those were some mortgages that were written some years ago. And I, I'm not sure if that's a common practice as much now, but because they previously existed, that's a window to get in. Additionally, some people own their house free and clear. So all they do is pay taxes, so that's their responsibility. And, and you find often, what I find with the tax liens is it's a lot of seniors that um, have their houses paid off and they're on a fixed income and they get in the slippery slope with uh, taxes you know so that so you know be cautious of when you're bidding on that you know because we don't necessarily want to be predatory um, we still want to we, we want to do business right but we want to have some integrity too so and sometimes you don't know the scenario till a little bit later on but just keep in mind it's business but there's still a humanity part about what we do okay so just keep those things in mind um, and then on, on other distressed properties, um, oh, what I like, and, and I like to look at the fire burn properties, like burnouts. So as long as the top is burned out and not too much at the bottom, like the foundation, it's a good deal, guys. Don't be scared of it because it's the same as like just with regular construction. 90% of properties, you still need a new roof if it's an, if it's an abandoned property. You still got to get a new roof. Your chances are you still need gutters. You still need windows. So what's the difference with... If something's just burned out a little bit at the top, don't be afraid of that. You could probably get really good deal. I know it was a deal, um, I won't give any addresses, but it was a burnout, multi, multi unit burnout corner property in the South Ward, 10 grand. Wow. Right here in Newark. So if you want really good deals, like I said, the profit is in the problem. So the, sometimes the worst, the, the worst con the condition of the property or the, or the more uh, tangled up it is, you know, with title or, you know, the more issues that it has, Sometimes that's the best case scenario. Just you're gonna have a lot of patience. 
you know, but that's how you get your good deals. No one really makes a hundred thousand dollar deal like overnight. You know, these profits that everyone talks about, no one really does that overnight. This is a this is a long term game, especially if you're looking to um, build generational wealth and, and some long term wealth to change your life. Life changing wealth. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see what other distress um, avenues that I had that I missed. I think uh, you got something over here. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Um, does anybody else have any other word of mouth? You know, of course, word of mouth. Um, and okay, let, so let me just touch on how you find owners, right? Because let's say you have the owner now. And this is just so free and simple. You guys are going to be like, what? Everybody is on social media. You can find all, people could be losing their house and they go to their feed, they were like on a yacht, they had some ace of spade, you know, but their house is in a foreclosure <laughs> status, I'm telling you. And uh, you can always find people, a lot of things too, people that losing properties or, in forecl or that could be in foreclosure still work, so they still might have a business profile on LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn, social, uh, Facebook, um, a lot of the business uh, sites, you could also buy software where it helps you like uh, get phone phone numbers for people. I won't. Uh, no, they didn't sponsor, so I'm not going to name any names of the websites. But um, there, there have there have some websites out there that you could look up and invest in if you want to do this like on a, on an ongoing ongoing basis. And it's really um, finding a good deal is really just putting your um, putting your uh, nose down and just going after deals, right? So letters, phone calls. Um, you know, one of my favorite things, I, I'm going to give you something that I say on the phone when I get voicemail. I just tell people I have a check for them. <laughs> hey, I'm Rose Mosley. Uh, you know, I'm calling about the property at X, Y, and Z City. Uh, I have a check for you. Where should I send a check? Give me a call. They're going to call me back. One house, I had four Keisha Browns on it. Four Keisha Browns I called and left a message. It was one house. So then a guy calls me back. He's like, yeah, you want to talk to Keisha Brown? And I said, absolutely. So I was, so then he was like, well, what is this about? You said you had a check for her? I do, because doesn't she own the house that's, that's blah, 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 address? Blah. He was like, that's not her house. I was like, oh, sorry for her. Okay, bye. <laughs> right? Because let's, let's face it. If you, get, if you have the ability to contact the owner on the phone and have the ability to actually speak to them, you want to let them know that it's about business. You want to keep it real nice and clean. You know what I mean? And that kind of works more towards properties that are abandoned because properties that are still occupied by the person, they still haven't kind of let it all go yet. Okay, so the, the two different type of distressed sellers. If it's abandoned, you can be more aggressive because they're like, how do I turn this problem into a check? So you show them how. You, you're, the, you're the one that's like, hey, I got a checkbook. Where do I mail this check to? They're going to call you. They're going to come. They're like, no, you don't got to mail it. I'm coming to meet you. I'll pick it up. I'm coming to meet you. <laughs> that's, what, that's the response you're going to get, but that's the response you want because you want to kind of bring them out of hiding. If they've abandoned a property, the mortgage company doesn't know how to find them, the city, their mama, the kids, nope, you know what I mean? Like everybody, they've really just abandoned a property. So if you, if you finally get in touch with them and offer them some glimpse of hope or something, a financial relief, they're going to really be um, attentive to you. So with that being said, does anyone have anything to share with how they may have found a property as well? Okay, cool. All right. So moving on. So I, hopefully that helped you guys out with how to find some deals and, you know, just being diligent. So what I'm going to do now is bring Mr. Uh, Damon Redman back up.